Hello everyone. First of all, I would like to welcome you all to our AITS Tech Talk webinar. Today's session is dedicated for Aviva Batch Management Solution. So yesterday we have conducted the sales part of it where we have covered the batch management value proposition, benefits, components, as well as the licensing model. While today we will deep dive into its technical part with my colleague Yara Youssef, who will be guiding us for the coming 45 minutes to show us the practical part of the batch management, including the integration with advanced uh, software and more. So I just wish you an informative session and please be reminded that you can type any question you have during the session in the question box and we will definitely answer all the questions at the end. Now I just uh, leave you in safe hands with the Arab. Hi Arab. Hi Nadir. So today's webinar will cover the technical part of Aviva batch management. Let's get started by defining the process classifications of Aviva Batch Management. Then we will talk about its integration with advanced softwares. And finally, we will take you through the demo in which we will be configuring the chicken feed production process as a general example. No matter how complex your process is, it can be configured easily using Aviva Batch Management. Either it is a single, multiple, or networked stream. What do we mean by a single stream? A single stream structure is a group of units through which a batch passes sequentially. Multiple material inputs are commonly used and multiple mater finished material may be produced. Similar to a single stream, the multiple stream structure consists of multiple single stream processes in parallel with no product transfer between them. However, they typically share the same raw material sources and the product storage. The network streams are the same as multiple streams, but there is no product transfer between them. In addition, it's important to mention that Aviva batch management can be integrated easily with advanced softwares, such as System Platform, MES, and Workflow Management. In our demo today, we will show you a general example about the chicken feed production process. As you can see in this scheme, in general, in order to produce the chicken feed we need four raw materials, corn, starch, soya, and vitamins. These four raw materials will be processed into the mixer where the oil will be pumped. After that, they will be transferred into the pellet mill where they will be heated, pressed, and then cooled, and later on, finally, to the packaging area. So we will start by defining and configuring our units. What do we mean by a unit? It's a group of processing equipment. It, it can either process the material or hold the material. So if we are talking about units processing the material, it's like the mixer, the pellet mill, the oil tank, and units holding the material are like the storage tanks in which we hold the raw materials, like the corn, starch, soya, and vitamins. Then we will configure the connections. The connections are the path where the material is transferred between two units. For example, we have four different connections between each of the four storage tanks of raw material and the mixer. We have a connection between the mixer and the pellet mill, the oil tank and the mixer, and so on. After that, we have the segments. The segments are part of the connections. And as you can see in the picture, we have between the connection A and D, three different segments. Segment one, segment five, and segment four. Between connection A and C, we have two segments, segment one and segment three. But in our demo today, we will not have segments. Later on, we'll be defining the process classes. The process classes is when we group more than one unit under the same title. So as an example, we have the corn, starch, soya, and vitamins, all are raw materials. So we can group them under the name bulk storage. And finally, we will be talking about the transfers. Now let's jump right into the demo in order to show you the configuration. Just a second, in order to open the SkyTab platform. So we will start by opening the Aviva Batch Management, the environment display. We go to Aviva Batch Management. This is our interface for today that we will be using in order to see the configuration. We will start by opening the model edit, the units part. 
So as I have already mentioned, we have four different storage tanks for the four raw materials. We have the pellet mill, we have the mixer, the packaging, and the oil supply. It's very easy to add them. You just click and you type the whatever name you want to add, and you click on add, and you will see the unit appearing here. After defining the unit, we'll have to define the connections to relate two different units. So we have four different connections between the four different storage tanks and the mixer. So as an example, I called ST1 underscore MX1. The source unit is storage tank one. So I am specifying a connection between storage tank one, which contains core, and the source, the destination unit will be the mixer one. And it's the same. We have also a connection between the pellet mill and the packaging and between the mixer and the pellet mill. After defining the connections, we have to define the process classes. So, as I have already mentioned in the slides, we have four different storage tanks for the raw material, which share the same usage. So that we can call them bulk storage. We just type here bulk storage, we add, and then we assign units. The units for the bulk storage are storage tank one, two, three, and four. Later on, we have the mixers. For example, here we have only one mixer, but in case in your process you have more than one mixer, mixer one, two, three, and four, you also group them under the same process class, which is mixers, then packaging and pellet mill. After defining the processes, let's jump into the equi equipment status. You can have whatever equipment statuses that you want. As an example, I already defined only one equipment status, which is clean. You can also, let's define another one, which is dirty, for example. We want, if, um, if it's dirty, we want it to be available. Okay, so you just type dirty and then you click add, and here it is, it's added. The units of measure depend on your process. As an example here, I defined three different units of measures, which are the degree C, minutes, and percent. The degree C will be used for the heating and cooling temperature, the minutes in order to, to know for how many minutes I want to mix, and the percent is in order to know the percentage of the material. The enumeration, by definition, is a data class which uses a number to represent a string value. So for the cooling, let's suppose we have an air vent valve that will be cooling the uh, products. This air vent valve, I want it to be as a Boolean. When I uh, put one, the value one, it will open. And when I put the value two, it will close. So this is the enumeration that we need in our process today as an example. Then we go to the processes in order to define our attributes and phases. Let's take the mixer as an example. And we want to specify as an attribute the capacity of our mixer. So you just write the name same as before and you click add the attribute will be here and you can specify the number i want the capacity to be 1000 you can specify whatever number you want and we click on change it will be changed for example for the pellet mill let's start with the phases in the pellet mill we have already mentioned that we will start by heating the material then we will press it and then we will cool it so we have three different phases Heat, press, and cool. For each of these phases, we have to create tags in order for the, soft, uh, for the Aviva batch management to start the phases and to stop them. So we click on each phase and we go into phase control status. You just click on select all and you click on create tags. And as you can see, all the tags will be created automatically. So whenever you want to start the cooling process, you just click on start. It will be started automatically. Everything will be done automatically. And the same is done for the heating and for the pressing. Now, in order to have to specify the temperature of the cooling that we want, we have to add something called a parameter. So I want to specify the temperature at which I want to cool my product. We just add a parameter. We call it temperature and we click add. And also this temperature, we want to see the target, the actual, the high and the low deviation. So you, we, I already specified the, the cooling temperature as 24 degrees C and I gave it like 
to be as a high deviation for two and three low deviations. So the maximum will be 26 and the minimum will be 21 degrees C. Also, the vent, the vent is, as we have already specified, it's an enumeration. So we just click on, uh, click here on enumeration and we just click on target and actual and we create tax. That's it. The same is done for the mixers also in order to create the tags and in order to create the parameter. Okay. After finishing this whole configuration, we have to click on file and validate. So our process model configuration is valid. Whenever there is something that which is not valid, it will give you a message telling you what is the error in your process. The next step will be updating the runtime. You just click update and runtime in order for the values to be updated. Now we'll go into the train edit. What do we mean by a train? In order to explain it in a very simple way, let's open the scheme. In our demo today, we have only one path for our process, which is going from the raw material to the mixer, pallet mill, cooling, and then packaging. The train provide a way to present various paths through the process. And let's suppose you have more than one mixer and the raw material will go into mixer one and mixer two. So you will have two different paths, which mean two different trains. In order to define your trains, there is something in Aviva batch management called train edit. You just double click on it and you open it. In our example today, we have only one train. That's why I configured it as train all and you assign the units that you want. I assigned all the units because it's only one path. But let's suppose it's mixer one and two. The first path, which is train one, will have the unit mixer one, and the second one will have mixer two. That's it for the trains. The next step will be defining the material, our raw material and our finished goods. We go into material editor. We close, we open materials editor. <laughs> our ingredients are, I1, I2, we have four raw materials, I1, I2, I3, and I4. I1 is corn, you just, you can uh, specify it as other than I1, maybe you will call it F1, C1, whatever, I1, the name is corn, you can write whatever material you have. I2 will be soya, I3 will be starch, I4 is the other materials, and I5 will be the oil. So here you just type the define the materials after that you have to specify each material where in which unit it will be present in order to specify this you have to go into edit and material locations so i'm clicking on i1 here the material id will be, will be i1 if i click here on i2 it will be i2 so you have to specify that i1 you have to assign the unit in which i, I already specified it as storage tank one and i2 will be in storage tank two i4 and storage tank four and at the same time, you have to specify the quantities of the material that you have. So that's it. After that, we have to go to the recipe edit in order to define our recipe. I have already prepared a recipe in, wh in which we will see the whole process. Let me open it. So I named the recipe as mother's chicken feet. In order to define this recipe, you just click on recipe header, you type the name of the recipe that you want. You can give it whatever ID you want, and you, you specify what is the minimum batch size, the maximum one, and the default. So the default will be 1,000. So each batch I will be creating, I will be creating, will have the size of 1,000. Then we will have to specify the what, are the equipments that we are using. We will be using all the equipments in the bulk storage, which are storage tank one, two, three, and four. We'll be using the mixer, the packaging, and the pellet mill. That's why I added them I added them all. Then we have to specify our input. So what are the input in the system? The input will be the corn, soya, starch, and the other material, which are calcium and salt. And we have to also add the oil. And the output will be the product, which is the chicken feed, which is F1 chicken feed, that's it. And you can specify here the values, which is 98%. I want my output to be 
Now we have to build this recipe. We start by clicking on Add Unit Procedure. Whenever you click on Add Unit Procedure, you will have to add a unit. So the first unit that the material will be transferred to will be the mixers. So the first unit procedure will be mixers. And in the mixers, I already named it, named it steps one, two. Then you will have the operation step one. I already changed the name to bulk add. So the first step in the mixer will be the bulk add. I will be adding all my raw material into the mixer. That's why I named it bulk add. And then we have to, how do we add these material? Into add, add phase, we have to add the phase. We go into the transfer phase that we have already configured, which is bulk underscore mixer. So the, now the material will be transferred from the bulk storage, which are the four raw materials, to the mixer. So whenever you click on add phase, one raw material will be added. You go into the parameters, ID, this is for I1 which is corn. So you have to repeat the same procedure for the four row material, I1, I2, and I3, I4. The second step will be mixing, mixing these raw material. So I added an operation here, I called it step two, and I added a phase, which is, I clicked on add phase, and I added the mixing phase that I have already mentioned and uh, configured in the model edit. After that, we will have the third unit procedure. Now we are moving from the mixers to the pallet mill. So we have to add the, the third unit, which is the pallet mill. And the pallet mill, as we have already mentioned, we have to heat, press, and cool. So we just click on the uh, add unit procedure to add the pallet mill. Then we have the operation, which is step three. And we have to add three phases. In order to have this shape of three phases, we have to click on add phase branch. This, is, this will appear, and you can add whatever phase you want. And then the fourth and the last step will be the packaging. This is it. The, la the next step will be validating this recipe in order to see if it's valid, and then to uh, make it approved for production. So this is it. Yeah, uh, now I, I want to discard the changes. Yes. Next, the most important part that it's that Aviva Batch Management allows you to schedule your batch. So we have to go into batch schedule. Let's suppose let uh, we will name the campaign campaign two, and in campaign two we want lot one and batch one. You specify which recipe you want. Here in our demo today we'll have only one recipe, but if you have more than one recipe, you you can specify which recipe you want. And also we have one train, which is train all, and the quantity is 1,000. So let's add one. Okay. It's open. In order to start this batch, we have to change the status from open into ready. You just click, click on initialize batch, and now it's ready. We close this one, and now we will run this batch. We go into batch display on schedule. We choose our batch, which is camp two, lot one, batch one. We make sure it, it's this one. And we click on batch start. So as you can see, the operator message is waiting to start. And here the material are being transferred. Let me open this one. OK. Just a second. Now the green light is that the material are being processed from the storage tank one into mixer one. Now, as you can see here, we have the quantity. So the quantity uh, of I2, now it's processing from storage tank two into the mixer two because the green light is in storage tank two. The Storage tank one shows the yellow ye yellow light, which means the material are already transferred from storage tank one into mixer one. Now, when the storage now when the uh, material from storage tank two will be transferred to mixer one, this one will turn into yellow. So yeah. Now the materials are being transferred from the storage tanks into the mixer. 
let's wait for the batch to be finished now it's being transferred from storage tank 3 into mixer 1 okay and here you can see the quantity the name of the material starch now we are transferring starch waiting to start now it's transferring from storage tank 4 as you can see here the id is i4 the name is now calcium and salt and the target is 30 the actual is 30 also so everything is going well we have to wait until the batch is finished okay the numbers are changing here the actual values now they are being mixed the green light and the operations is on step two mixer one which is the second step is mixing okay and as you can see it's showing the mixing time which is the target is 10 and the actual is 10 so we we are mixing the next step will be the pellet mill after mixing it will go through the pellet mill now it is starting into the pellet mill as you can see the temperature is 100 degrees c it will start heating pressing and then cooling now it's heating yes after heating it will press and then cool so the batch is done you can see from the status here that the batch is already done now we want to see the report of our batch we just click on batch reports execute re reports we click on browse let me mention something here. Aviva Batch Management allow you to have already predefined reports. Also, you can build your own report. But now we will use the predefined reports. We click on batch. For example, we will generate a report to see the batch details. The start time, you have to specify the start date time and the end time. I want to generate a report for the last 24 hours. In the last 24 hours, let's see how many batches I have already run we view the report and the report can be generated as a word excel powerpoint pdf that's generated as a pdf file okay so in the last 24 hours we have run all of these batches now as you can see the report is not expanded it's collapsed if you want to see the report as expanded you just click here show expanded to see all the details in the batch and you click on view report let's generate one expanded open as you can see here the report is expanded it has all the information by time at each time what was happening in the batch it's showing all the details it was in step one two and then it moved into step three and all the details that you want this is all about the reports before uh, finishing the demo i just want to mention that in order to integrate aviva batch management with in touch standalone you use the tag linker and in order to configure the security you use the security edit now the demo is done thank you everyone so hi nadir Thanks, Yara. Thank you so much for this valuable session. I hope everyone found it interesting. Uh, so let's just give the audience a few minutes to type their questions. And in the meanwhile, I just want to remind everyone that you can find our recordings on our YouTube channel. So just be reminded to follow us, subscribe to our channel. Uh, the links are already existing on the chat box. So the first question we received so far is, how can Aviva Batch Management be integrated with SP? Yara, I believe uh, they are asking about the integration with system platform. 
Yes, Nazir. So uh, as we have already mentioned in the slides in the presentation, uh, Aviva Batch Management can be integrated with System Platform, MES, and Workflow Management. Regarding the integration with System Platform, it's very easy and very direct to do it. You just go into your Orchestra IDE, you import your, uh, uh, your in-batch obje objects. You can find them under Program Files 86, Wonderware, Aviva Batch Management, and you will see the objects, application objects in batch. You will have uh, objects for the phase, for the unit, for the connections, and for the graphics. You import them. And then you will have to uh, also uh, connect the system platform to the uh, node of the Aviva Batch Management Server, uh, which is here, for example, GR platform. After that, you go into Aviva Batch Management, into the environment display. As you can see here, you go into the environment and you have to choose the um, choose add a connection, which is IBMX, because the connection between Aviva system platform and Aviva batch management is IBMX in batch message exchange. And then all the uh, and then you go uh, to the uh, orchestra IDE you go into batch management and you import all the units and all the configuration that was already done now in batch management, it will be present in the Orchestra IDE as objects. You will see all the units, the connections and everything. So that's it. Perfect. Okay, Yara. Uh, second question. Are these batch operations integrated with the physical world? Is there a PLC involved with tags we created here? I don't know if the question is clear. As I understood from the question, yes, uh, you can connect Aviva Batch Management directly to the PLC. You can do, do it directly. Okay. So, yes. Third one, how is historization done in Aviva Batch Management? Okay, the historization. Aviva Batch Management has its own database. So in order to historize everything that you have already done, you just need to go into the phases and to save history and you check the control status activity and the parameter status in order to save all the tags, all the phases that you have already configured and the parameters. And uh, also Aviva Batch Management will save using SQL SSRS. And let me add one more thing. If uh, you are integ if Aviva Batch Management is integrated with System Platform and Wonderware Histo Aviva Historian, it will uh, also Aviva Batch Management can use the Aviva Historian other than its own database. That's it. Okay. Uh, so far, this is the question that we have received. And again, we just want to remind you, if you still have any questions, just because we are running out of time, you can send it to us and definitely we'll come back to you. So, Yara, I want to thank you for this uh, session today. Thank you, I want I to thank everyone for their uh, for joining and for, for their participation as well. So, uh, have a nice weekend and we will virtually meet you soon in a new topic with AITS Tech Talk Winner. Thank you, everyone.